Hello, welcome back to my series in Factorio in which I'm attempting to build a mega factory. My name is Azrael, come along with me as we continue our adventure. In the last episode I went ahead and started setting up a loading dock over here in my iron mine and a corresponding unloading bay over near my new smelting area. Today I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the rail connections that uh, connect the two. So hopefully we can get that all uh, uh, up and running by the end of this episode. Here you see me uh, uh, crafting up the the input line for the railroad because it has to basically come in and around from the top in order to exit out the bottom. And then my uh, my pick wears out, and I got to craft up a new one. All right, and I uh, just need to clear away some of these uh, these trees in this forest here. I know that this is slow and rather boring, but I don't have construction bots yet, so it's what we have to do. Anyway, uh, here's the uh, the input line. I gotta come up with a better name for that, but uh, the the line that the rail network uses to get to the smelting area, whatever you want to call that. Um, speaking of, I'm gonna head back over here because I realized I don't want the line leading directly into the first loading dock. Uh, we're going to have to set up a, 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 a siding or a stacker or whatever you want to call it. So that means that the, the main line for the railroad needs to first curve up to the north here, just like this, and then a, a main line connecting in order to bypass the entire smelting area. I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. So that needs to cut across my, my copper ore line and then again the, uh, the the main bus that leads up to the smelters. Then I think I have, I have a, a thought occur to me. I don't have enough room up here for the return line. Uh, I, I do want to set this up to be a drive on the left system even though I'm an American and we should know better. Uh, but I don't have enough room. I'm going to get rid of some of the ore that's uh, clogging up my inventory at the meantime. But yeah, I'm not going to have enough room for the the uh, the eastbound line if I have the westbound line as far north as it is. So instead I'm going to come down here and make this the westbound line. And uh, yeah, get rid of that line up there. That should give me enough room to have the, the eastbound line coming back. And there you see me setting that up. And I just got to uh, fix up that, the, where it crosses that ore line. That line's not going to be there forever. As you'll see later on in the episode, my, my copper mine down to the south is getting dangerously low. It's the, the one mine that I've been using this entire series. So, and, you know, since we're now episode 10, this represents 10 hours of playtime. So it's lasted a good long while on its own. Uh, but yeah, it's going to need to be replaced soon. I'll probably need to take care of that in the next episode or so. Alright, and here I'm going to connect the, the output. It doesn't quite work for there, so it's going to need to come out at an angle. I'll go ahead and set that up there. That should work. I just need to go ahead and, and uh, get these trees out of the way, first of all. And there it goes. That should be okay. I'm hoping that uh, as I set up more stations to the south, they'll be able to connect up all right to that as well. You shouldn't have a problem. Uh, in the meantime, I'm out of rails, so I'm going to go up and uh, get some more steel, some more stone. And our, uh, look at the state of the sorry state of that iron belt, uh, the iron bus rather, is because I've I've choked off the input for the uh, the ore coming in. Because I put that substation in there and everything's loading up those chests. So I'm going to turn that off again. Let that all fill up with ore so that uh, the only output it has is to once again return to the, the existing smelting area. Now since I've lost a couple of, of uh, mining drills in the past, I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple more there. There's six new mining drills. Look at that. That is a solid line of ore now feeding back into the factory. That should help it. Uh, gonna pick up some more steel and start crafting up those rails here in a minute. 
get some more iron and then I'm going to turn this, this thing around so that it's not collecting the iron plates it's now unloading them back onto the bus because it currently needs it more than I do anyway here's that uh, that westbound line it has to take a bit of a weird route around my oil well here but that's alright it's just a, a slight detour and connecting that up on the other side just one track piece off there it goes and back under my coal line I'm gonna have to check on that soon too because I haven't been down there to check on its progress in a while I want to make sure that all the the miners are still running all right now I'm just gonna uh, continue this track off because it needs to hook up with the uh, the inflow line for the mining area on the other side there it is gotta get rid of some more trees out of my way and now my inventory is full once again I figure I can actually help that by crafting up some more rail so it uses up all the steel and iron that's uh, stacked up in my inventory and the and the, the stone as well but we find that was only a temporary solution so I'm gonna put down a box and uh, get rid of some of my my overflow there I seem to be doing that a lot lately and there's just random boxes all over my factory full of, of random stuff uh, but don't worry in at least in this case I do go back and pick it up again in, in a moment I'm just gonna extend th th this is going to be a very heavily traveled line and I figured just in case I want to hook up a way for uh, westbound traffic to get up into the mining center as well as the eastbound traffic because you never know that might come in handy and then it occurs to me that uh, I might want to do the flip side over here have a westbound connector for the output line just in case it ever becomes necessary you never know about these sorts of things and I'd rather be planning for a, a potential eventuality than not be prepared for when it becomes a necessity you know what I mean all right, uh, pick up some of those mining drills because yes, they have run out. But for right now, it doesn't look like my coal supply is in dire need at the moment. Uh, those existing mining drills are working just fine, so we're not going to worry about that for right now. Get some more research going. I realized I actually had some research options that were red science only. I thought I got all those taken care of a long time ago, but apparently not. So there they go. And uh, uh, I'm going to go down here and plan out the space for more stations. I'm not going to actually build the stations yet because I don't need them. The one that I have running right now is, or that I will get running in a moment, will be more than sufficient, as you'll see uh, once I actually get this all set up. And it lo does look like the other stations will be able to hook up to that output line just fine. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to make room for a total of I think three more stations so a total of four each station requires four tile width on either side so just spacing all that out for the moment I'm not actually gonna go ahead and, and put those in yet uh, but this this is almost ready for operation I uh, just once again got to clear out some of the space in my inventory by just dumping raw ore into those furnaces and then uh, yeah I get, get rid of all those belts now because I, I won't be needing them where they are and it but one of the problems is that I wanted this second set of columns to be where the copper uh, smelting happens but there's not going to be enough room for that in the e existing uh, set of stations that I've got so instead that's just going to be more iron smelting and I'll have the actual the official copper smelting done farther west because after all I've got the room for it I might as well just not worry about cramming everything into a tight little space and you can see here I'm uh, uh, setting up the spacing for another set of smelters uh, furnaces rather uh, for when I need them in the future I don't need them right now because <laughs> this just wait till you see this in action uh, obviously I'm recording this narration after the fact so I already know what's gonna happen you know so trust me on this it's gonna be more than sufficient for right now though I do need a place for my trains to turn around 
uh, because I'm doing the roll on roll off method for all of my stations, which means only one engine in the front of the train. Uh, so they can't turn around on their own. They need a dedicated spot to do that. So I'm going to build a roundabout up here. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding these roundabouts. A lot of people say, oh, it's just going to invite deadlocks. Uh, but uh, in a lot of the videos that I've seen, that's just not the case. Or at least it's a very rare case and one that can be dealt with on an uh, as-needed basis. Now down here in the station, I did forget to set up a... a uh, fuel loading station for all of these uh, uh, locomotives. I'm going to go ahead and set that up even though that part on the top is not completely necessary. I want it there for the eventual blueprint. Alright, I've got to load it up. I'm going to set up these uh, the stations. I forgot to name the one at the iron mine but that's alright. I can do that later. And another thing in the 0 0.13 update that I absolutely love is you can have multiple conditions for how long a train waits at a station. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that it waits until it is empty or until there's inactivity here at the unloading station and then wait till it's full or inactivity or a specific amount of time in the mine. And here we go, we're setting it off. Looks like everything's working. I'm going to shut it off at the moment because I realized that none of these things are actually working. There they go. Loading that up. Now set it back up to automatic. It will wait 60 seconds at the most or until the train is full, or until there's five seconds of inactivity. I'm just going to see which one it hits first. And it looks like we're on our way to fill up the train. It doesn't quite make it, but it makes it about 90% full, which is really nice. And so it's going to head over here into the unloading station, and I'm just going to watch as everything unloads. I forget that I still have some slow inserters on the unloading side. I'm going to upgrade all of those. Eventually they'll become stack inserters, but for the moment, it's working really nice. And I realized I forgot to actually set up the second uh, smelter line up into the main bus, so there that goes. Uh, you can I, I even see that those output lines, they're not quite fully saturated, but they are rather full. I'd call that at least 75% saturated. So... Uh, I, it, it looks like our iron plate deficiency is a thing of the past. So that, that's really cool. I like the way how that, uh, that four-lane belt balancer is working right there. And there's the next car that's also almost full, just slightly less than the last time. So this looks like it's going to be more than sufficient at the moment. You can see all of that filling in. And for the first time in a long time, my iron bus is completely saturated. And we have one full stack inserter in our output box. We're making progress. Uh, I realized that the uh, the bottleneck here is now circuit production. There's just not enough circuits being made. I'm going to turn in turn that iron collector back on so that I can now have uh, my own supply. And I'm going to set up some more iron, or rather, some more circuit production up here. Uh, going to continue on. I'm going to get rid of some of those duplicate uh, inserters because we shouldn't need them anymore. Uh, one set of inserters for each of those assemblers should be plenty. Should be is the operative uh, phrase there, of course. We'll see as time goes on. Uh, there's a couple of uh, fluid pipes in the way for bringing iron off of the main bus, but we'll work a, a creative solution around. There's, there's, You've always got the option of putting uh, the main bus belts underground to facilitate that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Get uh, some of the power poles out of my way and bring in the copper plates for this second side. And then get everything uh, put into place. I'm going to start using some red splitters and red underground belts wherever I can. Just upgrading sporadically as I go. All right, everything should be in place, and I just got to uh, connect power to the whole thing, and then finally tell each assembler what they're supposed to be doing. And then also, of course, get that output line hooked up to the, uh, the, the belt that leads to the main bus. And there we go. There's a lot more circuits being produced. Just what, making sure everything is running at full tilt. 
it looks like it's going in just about as fast as it can, considering the fact that they are level 2 assemblers and not level 3. Alright, we're starting to get a few more of those stack inserters in there. It's slow but steady. In the meantime, I'm going to pick up some more red belts and start upgrading a few more things. I noticed that the, the, the original smelting line there is barely operating at all. Uh, and that's okay, because we really don't need it anymore. So I'm going to head back over here into my iron mine. And I'm going to start upgrading some of this stuff to red belts in order to see if I can improve the uh, the throughput from this this uh, this mining area. A couple of fighter attacks going on, but no damage being done. I'm going to go ahead and craft up some more turrets in my inventory, though, because that's not going to last forever. All right, they're getting a few of these uh, these belts upgraded, so that hopefully the uh, the loading station can work that much faster. And at this point, I decide I'm officially cutting off the original line of smelters to the factory. Or whatever, you know what I mean. So, I, I just completely uh, cut off that one line that was heading back there. Do a few more upgrades. Uh, I've run out of red splitters in my inventory, but that's alright. Look how fast everything is working there. It's quite nice. Alright, I'm going to get rid of this entire line of belts. It's going to take a while because this is a really long line. It's one of the first belts uh, that I ever put down in this factory. So, it you know, changing of the guards in a way. And I know I've upgraded this uh, smelting area several times. I'm going to move these belts over into the, the center of the, the main bus. And once again, just deconstructing this all by hand, which will take a while. So, you know, I, I apologize if you get bored watching this. And then I cut off power to the entire smelting operation. Can't have that. I figure I should probably put a, a, a power pole down there as well. I don't want to cut off power to my oil refineries. And the nice thing about this is that now I have a whole bunch more furnaces in my inventory. Uh, since I don't have a copper uh, smelting area set up in my new area yet, nor even an unloading section, even though that's now the major bottleneck, uh, instead of iron plates, now I'm running out of copper plates everywhere you look. That's kind of the thing about Factorio, is whenever you fix one bottleneck, you're essentially creating another one. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that that's that's half the appeal, the appeal, though, because it keeps you going, it always gives you something to do, there's some damage being done over in my mining facility. Get our head over there, make sure nothing important was damaged. Just a turret, but look again at all of those biter corpses over there. Uh, the, the the one benefit I have to that is that when a whole bunch of spitters line up there, they're right on the track, so hopefully a, the occasional passing train will take care of those, but uh, in the meantime, that was a rather significant attack, so I'm, I placed down a couple more uh, more turrets. And now I'm going over here to my unloading facility and upgrading at least one line of inserters to stack inserters. Eventually I'll get both of those lines upgraded, but for right now I just don't have enough. Uh, I'm going to take all those extra furnaces in my inventory and add them to the existing line, uh, even though right now I don't need it because you can actually see that the iron line, uh, the iron plate output is backing up. But, uh, you know, it, it won't be that way forever. So I'm going to be prepared for the future here. So now instead of eight furnaces on each column, I now have 13. And that will eventually be increased to 16 because I believe that is the magic number uh, for the number of furnaces on each side of a belt in order to fully saturate it. And then since there is exactly one tile space between... Uh, th those, two, those two belts are three tiles wide instead of two. My substation can't quite reach this row of inserters. So I have to uh, power those up with the, uh, the older power poles. But at least I get everything up and running now. I'm looking at a few places that are uh, that where uh, uh, some biter nests have inevitably appeared. Because I'm starting to get a lot more attacks, even though, uh, like an episode or two ago, I went and cleared them all out. Obviously, they've moved back in and are becoming a problem.
but I'm not going to deal with that right now. Instead, I'm going to head down into my copper mine where I've lost three more mining drills. Uh, this is the uh, the copper mine that has served me for this entire series. So the fact that it's lasted me this long is nothing short of amazing. But you can see easily that it is on its last legs, and I'm going to have to go and find a new uh, copper mine in the very near future. Uh, I'll probably be taking care of that in the next episode or so. In the meantime, making sure that those turrets have enough ammunition to protect the place, because uh, they were actually getting rather low. Uh, but that is all the time I have right now. I'm going to uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this is Azrael. Never stop building.